This is Asen Tarabi, a Democrat operative and senior digital editor for Midas Touch, a liberal political action committee. On Monday, October 23rd, Asen posted a clip of President Donald Trump, who was giving a speech in Derry, New Hampshire. You know, I was very honored as a man, Victor Orban. Did ever, anyone ever hear of him? He's probably like one of the strongest leaders anywhere in the world. And he, uh, he's the leader of, right? He's the leader of Turkey fronts on both Russia. Now, as you may know, Victor Orban is not the leader of Turkey. He is the prime minister of Hungary. Asen's video clip went viral in a big way, and Democrat Twitter couldn't contain themselves. Breaking. Last night in the speech, Donald Trump wrongly stated that Viktor Orban was the leader of Turkey. That's embarrassing, because Viktor Orban is the leader of Hungary. Has the media condemned Donald Trump for losing his mental capacity? The leader of Hungary is Viktor Orban. Turkey is Recep Erdogan. Both strongmen worked with the President Trump. Trump spoke to each a dozen times. That Donald Trump couldn't remember who leads which country or didn't care to know is disturbing. Time for a mental acuity check. In a further troubling sign of his cognitive decline, Donald Trump short-circuited during a New Hampshire rally and called Hungarian President Viktor Orban the leader of Turkey. This man is unwell and it deserves far more attention. Trump's mental decline is on display again. This isn't good, he's unwell. This is all priceless. Trump making gaffes is not a regular occurrence, unlike you know who. Putin may circle Kyiv with tanks, but he'll never gain the hearts and souls of the Iranian people. Gee, where's Harry Sisson's tweet about Joe Biden's mental decline? Nah, not the same thing. Let's do a little thought experiment. If Joe Biden said that Viktor Orban was the leader of Turkey, how much media coverage would that generate about his age? But when Trump says it, and far more deranged things, including conspiracy theories, crickets. In what world is Brian Claus living? Because in reality, Joe Biden's daily gaffes are completely ignored by mainstream media. On the other hand, every little thing that Trump does is amplified by most media outlets, including Trump's turkey gaffe. He, uh, he's the leader of, right? He's the leader of Turkey. <laughs> Except he isn't. He's the leader of Hungary. Viktor Orban is not the leader of Turkey. Now, it is possible that Hungary and Turkey are kind of the same to him because Hungary sounds like hungry and Turkey is like gobble gobble, like nom nom, I'm hungry for some Turkey. Maybe he thinks they're the same, I don't know. Maybe he thinks they're the same. No, that's not the case because Asin, Midas Touch, Nicole Wallace and Rachel Maddow deceptively left out one slightly important detail. But Viktor Orban, and he's the head of Hungary and he runs it tough, uh, let me tell you, he runs it properly, he runs it strong. So the full story is that Trump made a gaffe and then seconds later, he corrected himself. Well, stop the presses, guys. And when I saw Asen's tweets, I just knew that there was gonna be more to it because everyone that Midas Touch employs or is affiliated with is a slimy liar, including Leigh McGowan, AKA politics grandma. Anyway, in the cosmic scheme of things, Trump's gaffe was not headline news, not remotely, but this whole event proves how dishonest the mainstream media is. For example, here's an article from The Hill and here's an article from Politico. Both mentioned Trump's gaffe but failed to mention that he said it correctly seconds later. And then there's Ellie Quinlan hogtailing, mm. who in a piece for the New Republic wrote, he's the leader of Turkey, Trump said to a quiet crowd in Derry, New Hampshire. In the new Emerson poll, we're leading the Republican primary field by 51 points. <laughs> with Trump at 59 to Sanctimonious and Birdbrain now are tied at eight, so they're tied. And in the general, we're beating Crooked Joe by a tremendous amount, like 12 points. Wow, real quiet crowd, Ellie. You could hear a pin drop. If Joe Biden gave a speech and claimed that the Prime Minister of Hungary was the leader of Turkey, we all know very well how Republicans would react. He has dementia. He's unfit to serve. He is an embarrassment to America. Ed Krasenstein spelled embarrassment wrong, but that's beside the point. 
If Joe Biden called Viktor Orban the prime minister of Turkey and then corrected himself, and it was the first time in weeks or months that he made a similar mistake, it wouldn't even be a blip. But unfortunately for America, this is not a once in a while thing, as Joe Biden gaffs every single speech. Let me start off with two words. Made in America. Made in America. We have a thousand billionaires in America. You know the average tax rate they pay? Eight, E-I-G-H percent, eight percent. In 2018, when they tried to do it, we went to 54 states. I want to tell my Republican friends, get ready, pal. You're going in for a problem. When Trump calls Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban the leader of Turkey, Republicans don't bat an eye. This is what hypocrisy looks like. What hypocrisy? Trump said a thing and then quickly corrected himself. What are we supposed to get all up in arms over? Democrats will go after Trump for things as simple as walking slowly down a ramp and theorize that he has brain damage. But when Joe Biden trips and falls regularly, well, it's never Joe Biden's fault. They put a sandbag there. Of course he was gonna trip over it. He fell walking up the stairs because of the wind. It was windy. Joe Biden can at least ride a bike unlike Donald Trump. Who cares if he fell? It was the wind. And my personal favorite moment comes from the official digital rapid response channel of the Biden-Harris campaign. Trump praises Viktor Orban, calling him the leader of Turkey. He is the prime minister of Hungary. And this is pure f***ing irony. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. We are back together here in Cambodia. And I want to thank the prime minister of Co for Colombia's leadership and the ASEAN, as ASEAN chair and for hosting all of us. So despite the fact that he was physically in Cambodia, Joe Biden thanked the Prime Minister of Colombia for not only hosting the event, but for being the chair of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Colombia is in South America and is not an Asian nation. Hell, they don't even have a Prime Minister. They have a President. And there are important differences between the Trump and Biden incidents. When Trump made his mistake, he was riffing off the top of his head, and he quickly corrected himself. When Joe Biden made his mistake, he read Cambodia as Colombia, and then he failed to correct himself because Joe Biden had no idea that he screwed up. But Democrat pundits like Brian Tyler Cohen, whose show is ironically called No Lie, routinely attempts to gaslight the audience. That is to say nothing of the raft of verbal diarrhea that he's been spewing over the last few weeks, completely neutralizing the central premise of his campaign that it's Joe Biden who's in cognitive decline, while he is A-OK. -okay. Watch just a small sampling of what Donald Trump said, and then tell me which presidential candidate's brain seems to be broken. But I know you but never you paid, under your administration, you guys never paid it's ransom. All coming through, Brian, it's all coming through Iran, and Obama wants to, he doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to mention he doesn't even mention them in his statements. It's all coming through Iran. But you mean President Biden. So, uh, uh, but right no, no, now... I also mean Obama. What do you mean? I mean Obama and Biden, but I, I, Obama is Biden's boss. Now, you heard Brian Kilmeade jump in and try and correct Trump, and Trump countered saying that he was also referring to Barack Obama's statements on Israel, which, surprise, surprise, didn't mention Iran's influence on Hezbollah and Hamas. But even if Trump mistakenly called Biden Obama, pundits and politicians calling the current president by the name of the previous president is a pretty common mistake. Take, for example, Nancy Pelosi. Those who've had business dealings with him, he operates this way. First, he tries to charm you. President Bush tries to charm you. If that doesn't work, Trump. he tries to bully you. You have the Secretary of the Treasury saying they want a clean, clean debt ceiling. I said, said President Bush, I'm sorry, I meant to say, it's hard for me to say it. And that office has its own Inspector General. This Inspector General was appointed by President Bush, excuse me, Trump, the Affordable Care Act. President uh, uh, Bush has come out against that, as you know. Either we win or whoever wins understands the priorities of the American people, and they are not what President Bush, excuse me, 
President I'm so sorry, Trump. President Bush. <laughs> I never thought I'd pray for the day that you were president again. And just the other day, Judge Jeanine Pirro made a similar error on The Five. But Obama, he, he, he just contradicts himself. Last week, he said, you know what? He said, I have uh, convinced the Egyptian officials to open the Rafah border. We can't even get Americans out of the Rafah gate. Now, when you're a pundit or politician who has said President Bush or President Obama hundreds of times over eight years, it becomes muscle memory. So it happens. And let's not forget the time that Joe Biden confused Donald Trump with George Bush. And the character of the country, in my view, is literally on the ballot. What kind of country we're going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George, uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. In that case, it was probably muscle memory. But of course, Brian Tyler, no lie Cohen, makes the case that Trump shouldn't be president because he doesn't know who's running the country. But when Joe Biden does it, crickets. I took it to instill public confidence in the vaccine. President-elect Harris took it, took hers today for the same reason. Now, when President Harris and I took uh, a virtual tour of a vaccination center in Arizona. Last week, President Harris and I stood in the United States Capitol. And that's why I asked President Harris to travel to the region last August. But all kidding aside, of course, President Harris is a proud Howard alum. Again, it's one thing to mistakenly say President Obama or President Bush because they were in fact presidents at one point or another. However, there has never been a President Harris and God willing, there never will be. I'm not being facetious. Well, President Harris led this effort. President Harris. Anyway, that's it for now. Follow me on X at Don't Walk Run. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you next time, if there is next time.